1800 hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The National Assembly was informed today that wheat procurement targets set for the current season will be achieved by the end of June. The Minister for Planning and Development has assured the Chinese companies of resolving their issues on priority. The Minister for National Food Security has expressed the resolve to make every possible effort to take the country forward on the path of development. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs emphasizes the need for strengthening bilateral ties and encouraging the Canadian companies to invest in Pakistan. The old party's hooded conference leadership have denounced imposition of ban by fascist Indian government on Kashmiri students to travel to Pakistan for pursuing higher education. South Korea has expressed security concern over North Korea's resumption of nuclear program. And now the news in detail. The National Assembly was informed today that the wheat procurement target set for the current season will be achieved by the end of next month. The Minister for Commerce, Navid Kamar, informed the House during question hour that the country is self-sufficient in wheat production, but over the last two years, a shortfall has been witnessed due to various factors, including non-availability of timely fertilizers to farmers, climate change and shortage of water. He said the government has decided to import 3 million metric tons of wheat to meet the domestic requirements. He said it has also been decided to take firm action against hoarding and smuggling of the commodity. The Minister for Commerce said modern silos will be established to ensure better preservation of wheat. The Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Murtaza Javed Abbasi, regretted the delay in completion of new Balakot city. He said 30% work on the project has been completed and responsibility rests with the provincial government to complete the remaining 70% work. A meeting of House Business Advisory Committee of the National Assembly was held in Islamabad today with the Speaker Raja Parvez Ashraf in the chair. The calendar of sessions of the Assembly for the ongoing parliamentary year and business of the House for the current session came under discussion. The committee decided to continue the current session till the 20th of this month. It was further decided that apart from taking up questionnaire, calling attention notices, legislation ready to be taken up by the House, issues of public importance would be discussed. Responding to points of the opposition members, the Law Minister Azam Nazir Tarar clarified that legal and constitutional procedure was followed to remove the Punjab governor. He said it is a parliamentary democracy and the president is bound to follow the advice of the prime minister under the constitution. The attorney general of Pakistan, Ashtar Osaf Ali, also echoed the remarks of the law minister, saying there are also decisions of courts on the matter. Speaking on a point of order, the federal minister Javed the thief said alleged corruption charges against former Prime Minister Imran Khan must be taken to logical conclusion. He said Imran Khan is apparently involved in the reported corruption of Farah Gogi because he is acting as her spokesperson. The House today adopted a resolution stressing that obedience of the Constitution is obligatory on every citizen. The House will now meet tomorrow at 11 a.m. The Minister for Planning, Development and Special Initiatives, Asan Iqbal, has said the government is prioritizing the youth's development in the coming budget for fiscal year 2022-2023 as many initiatives are being considered for them. Addressing a press conference in Islamabad today, he said in the upcoming budget the government would introduce multiple skills training projects for the youth to enable them earn the livelihood besides contributing to the country's productivity. The Minister for Planning said the budget would enable youths to get more employment opportunities in the coming upcoming fiscal year. 
Talking about the completion of CPAC projects, Asan Iqbal said he has met representatives of many Chinese companies working in Pakistan and assured them of resolving the grievances and issues on priority. The Minister for National Food Security and Research, Tariq Bashir Chima, has expressed a resolve to make every possible effort to take the country forward on the path of development. He was presiding over a high-level meeting of the ministry in Islamabad today. Tariq Bashir Chima said development of the country must be given the top priority. He was also given a briefing by senior officials of the ministry. The Ministry of Information, Technology and Telecommunications has constituted a committee to find out reasons behind foiled cyber attack attempt on the National Telecommunication Corporation networking side. It was decided today during a meeting held in Islamabad under the chairmanship of Minister for Information, Technology and Telecommunications, Sayyid Aminul Haq. The committee, headed by the IT Ministry Additional Secretary, would also ensure that such attacks do not occur in future. During the meeting, the Minister of Information Technology was briefed about cyber attack attempt made on NTC networking site. Addressing the meeting, the IT Minister directed to shift e-cabinet and e-office to a separate system for making them more secure. He said NTC had foiled many cyber attack attempts last year which manifested that the institution was secure. This is Radio Pakistan. The Canadian High Commissioner Wendy Gilmore called on the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Hinara Bani Kar in Islamabad today. Bilateral relations and overall situation in the region were discussed during the meeting. The Minister of State emphasized the need for strengthening bilateral ties and encouraging the Canadian companies to invest in Pakistan. She also stressed on facilitating the issuance of Canadian visas for Pakistani students. The Election Commission has rejected former Deputy Speaker Qasim Suri's reference against Pakistan Tariq Saab's dissident members of the National Assembly. The Commission, in its reserved word- verdict, declared that the reference lacked solid evidences against the lawmakers. The Chief Election Commissioner, Sikandar Sultan Raja, announced the verdict. The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has announced a logo design competition on the eve of the 75th Independence Day of Pakistan to be celebrated on the 14th of August this year. In a tweet today, the Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Mariam Aurangzeb, said the logo can be emailed at dgdfpem at gmail.com till Sunday. The Minister said any further information in this regard can be obtained from the website of the Directorate of Electronic Media and Publications. Pakistan's exports of goods and services to Italy witnessed an increase of 35.58% during the first three quarters of the current fiscal year. According to State Bank of Pakistan, the overall export of Pakistan to other countries witnessed 26.64% increase from $18.713 billion to $23.699 billion. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir APHC leadership, student unions and other organizations have strongly condemned the imposition of ban by Narendra Modi-led fascist Indian government on the Kashmiri students to travel to Pakistan for pursuing higher education. The APHC leadership in a statement termed the notification by the Modi-led fascist Indian regime in this regard a conspiracy to keep Kashmiris backward and uneducated. Jammu and Kashmir People's League, Jammu and Kashmir Muslim League, Jammu and Kashmir Muslim Conference, APHC leaders Khwaja Firdaus Ahmed and Dr. Akhtar Rasool in the statements in Sirinagar said the ban was meant to destroy the future of the Kashmiri students. Meanwhile, the Indian police arrested four innocent Kashmiri youth in Bimna area of Sirinagar after labeling them associates of Mujahideen to justify their detention. India's notorious National Investigation Agency conducted a raid at Darul Alum and Toshikala area of Palwama district. India's fallen 
in the press freedom ranking of the media watchdog Reporters Without Borders from 142 to 150 among 180 countries, according to Daniel Bastach, the director of Asia-Pacific Desk, the Reporters Without Borders changed its methodology this time to also measure censorship and to corporate pressure and media ownership structures. He said, apart from the security of journalists, immunity, rather impunity of attacks has increased and corporate influence increased as well. South Korean President Yoon suk Jeol has said security situation in the region is tough after reports of North Korea resuming its nuclear program. Speaking during the, his first meeting with senior presidential secretaries since he assumed the charge of his office, he called for close monitoring of the situation. The president stressed to closely monitor effects not only on security but also on other areas of state affairs in case such a situation arises. Is. And finally, the weather. Hot and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country, while the plain areas will remain under the grip of severe heat wave conditions during the next 12 hours. However, gusty and dust raising winds with light rain are likely in the Port of Har region, central Punjab, while gusty and dust raising winds in southern and central plain districts of the country in the afternoon. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.